Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and welcome to Alpha Centauri. Today we're going to be talking about the project that was announced earlier uh, last year, back in 2016, when the scientists actually came up with a pretty cool idea on how we can potentially get to the system using modern technology. Now today we're going to do a little bit of math behind it and we're going to find out if it's actually possible. Let's talk about Project Starshot and welcome to What The Math. <laughs> And I really just wanted to start with uh, this. This is the video from the Breakthrough Starshot uh, project uh, website, or specifically their YouTube channel, where they kind of show you the idea behind it. So here we have these really, really powerful lasers. And each of them is going to point at a specific point in space. And this point represent is represented by this uh, uh, solar sail that is then basically propelled at a very, very high acceleration toward a location in space where we predict the Alpha Centauri system will be in approximately um, 40 or so years. Now all of this looks really cool and uh, really awesome, but I just actually wanted to focus on the science and the math behind this and uh, wanted to find out if this is actually going to be possible scientifically, mathematically, and basically kind of give you an idea of what's involved um, in this particular situation. And here, as you can see, they imagine this to have some kind of a terrestrial planet there. So let's go to a website that's actually, that's also the official sponsor of this channel. And this is brilliant.org where we're going to actually go into astronomy, then into worlds beyond earth and use one of the lessons here on interstellar travel to try to figure all of this out. So first of all, let me briefly mention what you actually saw in the video you just uh, witnessed. This was a solar sail, um, a method of travel that basically uses the radiation from the sun to essentially try to propel an object in space. Now, because our sun actually has um, radiation coming out of it, we can kind of use it f as a propellant. We can basically bounce it off a specific object, in this case, what would be known as a solar sail, and generate actual force and then move that object in a certain direction. So this has already been used um, by, or oh, most recently by the Japanese actually. And this is a probe known as ICROS. This is the Japanese probe that uh, was launched uh, back in 2010 and uh, made it all the way to Venus, passing by Venus at about 80,000 kilometers. And this is kind of what it looked like. So this is a solar sail that was already launched, tested, and we know it works. So all of this implies that if we were to place a probe right here next to our planet Earth, um, because of the solar radiation, we would actually be able to create um, just a little bit of force, enough for this particular probe to start gaining uh, more velocity and potentially escape the solar system. Well, here's this, the thing though. At this location in space, our, um, our planet Earth receives approximately um, 1,300 watts of energy per square meter. And if you were to convert this into Newton, and by the way, this is the formula we're using here, and here is the solution for this kind of a problem. So if we were to convert this to Newtons, uh, it, would it would be approximately nine uh, times 10 to the power of minus six Newtons. Um, now, if you ever go back to the website that is previously known as Order of Magnitude, uh, also from Wikipedia, you can kind of find out that this amount of force is actually very, very li little. It's basically almost unperceptible. We would need to have at least, uh, I guess, 10,000 more power to make it equivalent to an ion engine, which is already not very powerful. So this is not a lot of power. You would need to keep this object in orbit around Earth for possibly years for it to actually achieve um, even escape velocity from our own Earth. Uh, so for it to escape orbit, it would have to receive the solar radiation for quite a long time. And mostly because at this location, um, a meter square of solar sail will only produce approximately 6 times 10 to the minus 4 meters per second square of acceleration, assuming the probe is about 3 kilograms in weight. Now that is a very, 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 very small amount of acceleration. Um, if you know anything about gravity, the gravity on Earth is about 9 meters per second square. This is like 10,000 times less than that. So 
it's not enough. But we can still actually use uh, modern technology to basically create a much, much larger amount of energy that these solar sails receive. And this is actually what you saw in the video in the beginning. So the Breakthrough Starshot Initiative um, is actually a kind of a multi-billion dollar project uh, formed and I guess um, supported by several billionaires around the world, including, I believe, the founder of Facebook and a few other billionaires. And it's also supported by one of the greatest minds of our time, Stephen Hawking. And these two guys are providing the money. Now, um, interestingly, if you actually look at how and what they want to achieve, it's really not that complicated. They're basically pointing a very, very, very large laser, or specifically here, several lasers at a location in space. And they're going to be producing a total of approximately 50 billion um, watt of energy. Now, remember, uh, Sun right at this location produces about 1.3 thousand watt of energy. They're thinking of producing 50 billion. That's this many times more. So basically 36 million times more energy or almost 37 million times more. And you would expect this to produce a tremendous amount of acceleration compared to what we saw before. And it actually does. So as a matter of fact, if we were to fire these lasers at the same type of a sail, that's about three kilograms in, um, in mass, it would take approximately 150 hours for that object to reach um, about a fifth of the speed of light. In other words, for it to move at 0.2c, we would need to uh, shine those lasers at this object for approximately 150 hours, which is actually pretty crazy. So we could potentially accelerate it to um, a fraction of the speed of light if we were to obviously point directly at it for, for this long. And because those lasers don't actually decrease in energy with distance, as long as we're pointing it straight at the object, it would actually start traveling really, really, really fast. And so here, if we actually wanted to launch this space probe and try to have it visit those um, extraterrestrial planets, we would have to give it a boost uh, similar to this. And so let's actually give it the boost of 0.2 um, speed of light and see how fast it moves away from here. We're actually going to change the time here a little bit. And as soon as I give it the speed uh, that we just saw in the simulation, look at that. It just kind of zooms away from the location where Earth used to be. It moves ridiculously fast and it obviously is on the escape velocity out of our own uh, solar system and here it's actually already getting pretty far away so within only um, a few days it's going to be uh, pretty much almost outside of our solar system or at least outside of the inner solar system and so this is essentially what we're trying to achieve here now obviously shining uh, those lasers at a space object for about 150 hours can be a little bit problematic, especially because that will require us to have some really ultra precise objects and it wouldn't really be possible with Earth spinning as well. So we need to basically change something. And here, what we're going to be changing is the mass of the object. So let's go back to Earth for a second. And we're actually going to imagine that we're launching something else. We're launching something a lot less massive. Specifically here, we're going to launch what's known as a nanoprobe. A probe that is still as effective as the one we just launched, but is made with nanomachines um, at, a, at a very, very, very tiny scale. Now, that's essentially what makes Project Breakthrough so different. Because their intention is to launch these nanoprobes using those lasers, instead of launching something that's larger, uh, similar to a sail we just launched in um, Universe Sandbox. So here, if we actually redo the math and try to get the same speed for an object that's um, slightly less massive, and let's just say we want to only spend about 10 minutes of our time um, shining the lasers at this object, you would need to have an object that's approximately um, three thousandths of a kilogram. In other words, it has to be approximately 3.3 grams. Now, okay, that's actually quite interesting because we could totally create a probe that's about this weight. So if we were to actually 
launch an object that would be similar to, I guess, a marble in terms of weight at least. So here it's about five grams. We, we're dealing with about three grams. Um, it would only take us 10 minutes of those lasers shining at it for it to gain the same speed. And so here, let's try this again. This is actually more or less in real time. We're going to shine for 10 minutes and give it the speed of about 0.2 um, light speeds. And look at that. Just like that, it basically starts flying away from our planet Earth. And Earth is somewhere right there in the back. And uh, moves away really, really fast. And so only after 10 minutes, it would actually acquire necessary speed. And we can continuously do this with um, object after object after object. And, it, in, you know, in an hour, we can launch like up to six of them. And uh, within a few days, we can have hundreds of them heading toward the direction of Alpha Centauri and basically have these mi micro probes, miniature probes, uh, explore the nearby solar systems and transmit their signals to us as they explore um, outer space. Now, the idea itself is actually pretty manageable. It's definitely pretty brilliant as well and would allow us to explore nearby solar systems um, within the next few years. As a matter of fact, if we actually take a look at the nearby 100 stars, we could probably reach the vast majority of these stars within about 50 years um, of the launch of those objects. And, and then within the next, I guess, 20 or so years, we would get signal from most of them. So if we were to basically just bombard the outer space with those tiny probes, which would probably cost almost nothing to create and launch, we could definitely explore all of these stars in the next century and have enough data to actually know exactly what's going on there. So by itself, Project um, Breakthrough Starshot is brilliant. And this of course takes me to the sponsor of this channel, brilliant.org. Thank you so much for providing this awesome lesson and for helping me create this video. And thank you so much for your support. And anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. Let's finish this video by maybe doing something crazy like exploding Alpha Centauri and um, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out. And as always, bye bye. And tomorrow we're going to talk about another topic that you may have not known before. But in the meanwhile, let's watch the beautiful yet unusual and possibly quite impossible to, to create in real life supernova of Alpha Centauri.